This video is going to be all about standing waves. Now before I talk about standing waves, I do have to talk about what happens to a wave whenever it hits a boundary and is reflected back. And that, that's a relatively uh, simple explanation. Whenever it does, it undergoes upon reflection a pi or 180 degree phase shift. So like here, my wave pulse comes in, it hits, right, and it reflects at 180 degrees or pi out of phase. So it starts out, if you will, on top uh, and then reflects opposite down on bottom, a pi phase shift. So you know, here's an idea, it comes in, it hits, and then it reflects back uh, on bottom. So whenever reflection occurs, uh, you have a pi phase shift. Um, I, I guess I will point out here also though, um, what other thought, if it were a soft boundary, um, that you actually would get no phase shift it was, if it was allowed to go up. A quick explanation for why this occurs up here. Um, what's happening here is Newton's third law. Uh, for every force, there is an equal and opposite force exerted on it. So the string exerts a force on the wall. But the wall isn't moving. Right? The wall then exerts the exact same force back down on the string, which then pushes the string down, on, uh, down to the bot bottom according to Newton's third law. Standing waves is the superposition or the combination of two waves with some points remaining at rest and others vibrating between positive and negative amplitude. What's actually happening with a standing wave uh, is a wave is allowed to move towards a barrier and then is reflected back. Now the reflected back wave has uh, a phase shift of pi or 180 degrees. And then the reflected wave and the wave going towards the barrier uh, end up adding uh, superposition, uh, which gives you some points that are going to have uh, no amplitude at all, always destructive interference. Those are called nodes in a standing wave. And then you're going to have some other points that will alternate between maximum amplitude whenever you have, for example, two ups, so to speak, um, destructive interference whenever you have an up and a down, would be nothing, and then constructive interference whenever you have two downs, right? So it alternate between the uh, between the amplitudes, the positive amplitude, the negative amplitude. There. Now, um, I'm also going to provide a link below this video to a website. Unfortunately, it's not loading up uh, in this video right now um, from Penn State, but it's it's a really good little demo that will actually show you what's going on with those waves. Please make sure to check those out. Uh, so the link will be below this video. Now, in uh, standing waves, in, in fact, now that I think about it, why don't you go ahead and pause the video now and go check out that link. Um, what you're going to end up seeing is, uh, like in this picture right here, and there'll, there'll be multiple pictures going down, but in this picture right here, there'll be a wave that goes at the barrier, and whenever it reflects, a standing wave will start to form. Now, um, here's, here's uh, something else with standing waves. You have harmonics, okay? Um, so harmonics. Uh, your fundamental harmonic looks like this uh, for a closed string, all right? Uh, it's half of a wavelength. And we're going to go over other har uh, harmonics, um, how that applies. Here's the uh, first harmonic, or the second harmonic, excuse me. It is a full wavelength on a closed-end string. Here's your third harmonic. Notice what's happening here. There is no partial, uh, there, there is no odd pieces. It's all by half wavelengths to form uh, standing waves. Um, you, you have to enclose strings, have nodes at each end. And so the harmonics continue to go up, and then we're going to apply that uh, a little bit better in the, in the next slide. If you haven't already paused to go and check out this website, make sure to do that now. Um, hopefully you already have and you came back and just caught that portion here at the end. All right, now we're going to derive equations for different types of strings and pipes and when standing waves can actually form. Because standing waves don't form at any point in time. There are actual set rules for when it's allowed to form. For example, in a closed on both end pipe or string, you have to, because it's closed on both sides, have nodes on each uh, end over here. Uh, whenever it's closed on both sides. So here's another example. Here's a pipe closed on one side, open on the other. There must be a node on the closed side. Um, because of that, let, let's call this length L right here, by the way, length of string or the length of the pipe L, script L. But because of that, there are definite rules for where your harmonics can get set up comparing L here uh, to what wavelength I have. All right, so let's look at this uh, first wave right here and, and, and try to write an equation based upon that. This here is half of a wavelength. Notice uh, it, it does not go all the way around. If I were to draw an entire wave out for you, it would end up coming like this, bouncing off and reflecting, kind of, kind of like the second one there. But that's not actually the case. That's not what I have here. Um, so uh, this is only half of a wavelength, one pocket, if you will. Uh, so the length of the pipe, L, 
in this case is equal to lambda divided by two, or one half lambda. Now the second harmonic, so that's the fundamental, the lowest note that could be played, so to speak, on an instrument. Here maybe it's a guitar, right, with the string clamped at both sides. Um, the second harmonic, uh, or the next one up, is an entire wavelength. L equals two lambda over two. Right, one wavelength, two divided by two is one, because it goes up and then uh, it goes up and then comes back down, and gets reflected there. So there's an entire wavelength. Uh, for the th uh, for the third harmonic, L is equaling three lambda over two, and for the fourth harmonic, L is equaling four lambda over two. And so for a closed on both ends pipe or string, closed on both ends, we have an equation in lambda over two equals the length of the pipe or the string, where n is the harmonic number, uh, and it has to be a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. The reason you can't have decimals is because standing waves aren't set up in decimals, so the rule here is you have to have nodes on both ends because it's clamped off at that point in time. There's a high pressure or a high resistance point at that spot. Uh, now let's come over here and let's look at open on both ends. Doing the exact same thing, let's call the length of the pipe L, so I'll, I'll draw that here. So the length of all these pipes is L, and for the top one, that is half of a wavelength. If you will, that's the middle portion. Uh, let's, let's take this picture right over here as an idea. Uh, this is the cutoff from here over to here. Okay, so it's that middle portion, but it's half of a wavelength, if you will. Here's a fourth, here's a fourth. So uh, you're going to have L um, is going to equal, once again, lambda divided by two. A fourth plus a fourth is, is a half. Now this next one down is a whole wavelength. Here's a half a wavelength right here. Here's a fourth, here's a fourth. So we're going to end up with L equals 2 lambda over 2. And I think you can see where this is going. And whenever I've gone through and I've drawn out all the pictures and I've gone through and seen what standing waves can actually form, for an open on both ends, um, I end up coming out with an equation that's exactly the same, m lambda over 2 equals L. So as long as both ends are identical, whether they're closed on both sides or open on both sides, it uses the exact same equation. Now, I, I should point out, because I didn't earlier, if uh, you have an open side, there must be an anti-node at that point. Uh, it must open up at that point. There, there can't be a node or somewhere in between, of course, but there can't be a node on an open end of a pipe. So open and closed actually use the exact same equation, where n is the harmonic number. Okay, uh, which harmonic you're trying to set up. Now let's look at closed on one end and open on the other. And notice that you have a node on the closed end, an anti-node on the open end. So this is going to actually be a little bit different. The length of the pipe, we're going to once, a call, once again call L. And then here in this fundamental harmonic, the lowest note you can play, that is actually a fourth of a wave. Uh, that's, if you will, coming over to this part. That's just this part of a wave. It's not going all the way around. It's missing the other three-fourths. So here, L is equal to uh, lambda divided by 4. In the next one, though, because of the rule, I have to have a node on a closed and an anti-node on the open. Uh, the only way you can draw that is to give yourself an entire half a wavelength and another fourth, or three-fourths of a wave. So L equals 3 lambda over 4. Uh, on the next one, L equals, just drawing this out, there's no, there's no other way to draw it following the rules that each... Um, for each opening, there must be an antinode, and for each close, there must be a node. Um, you end up coming out with, with this right here, always over 4 because of uh, the, the fourth of a wavelength that's always at the end near, near the open side. Um, and, and you also notice that you're only able to find odd numbers of harmonics. You're not able to get even numbers of har harmonics. So if you have an open uh, on one end closed pipe, uh, closed on the other end, uh, it's n lambda divided by 4 equals the length of the pipe, but n is only allowed to be odd numbers. Two other thoughts for you about, about these equations here. Um, the longer your pipe, L, right, the longer the wavelength you get, and if we look at the equation, velocity equals wavelength times frequency, there, the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, if, assuming that the velocity, let's say, of sound remains constant if we're dealing with instruments. Um, if the wavelength goes up, the frequency must go down. So longer pipes actually produce much, much lower sounds, which should make sense to you. The big, huge organ pipes, uh, the really tall ones are the ones that produce the lowest notes. The tuba actually has the most piping that's all curled up in the, in the band or the orchestra there, uh, and it produces the lowest notes, where the piccolo, incredibly short uh, little pipe 
there, uh, produce ver produces very high notes. Uh, another thought also, closed and open uh, pipes here. Whenever you compared closed, open, and then an open closed, right, these two follow the exact same principle. So with organ pipes, you'll see a vast majority of them are open on both sides. The reason for that is you can hit every single harmonic in there, which gives you more possibilities for notes on the same pipe. But the really, really low ones, they're always going to use closed on one side, open on the other. Reason for that is the wavelength here that's formed in a closed on one side, open on the other, is four times as long as the pipe that, uh, the pipe that it's formed in because it's one-fourth of a wavelength. So you're able to get a much longer wavelength from a shorter pipe longer wavelength, lower frequency. Whereas if you use, let's say, open on both ends, trying to hit uh, a very, very low note, notice the denominator only divided by two there, you're uh, going to end up having to use twice as long of a pipe to hit the exact same low note, fundamental frequency note, uh, than you would if you used a closed on one end and open on the other. I'm going to solve two quick problems for you now. A flute is actually an open-ended pipe um, on both sides, open-ended. Air can escape through the base down here um, and through the mouthpiece up here. So air, air has two places to escape on a flute, open-ended pipe. That means automatically we're dealing with N lambda divided by 2 is equal to the length of the pipe. Now, a, fruit has an, a flute has an approximate length of 66 centimeters, it says. Uh, the lowest frequency it's capable of playing, which by the way is middle C or C4, is 261 hertz. And we're looking for the speed of sound. Now, thinking through this backwards, um, velocity equals lambda times wavelength times frequency, right? And I already know the frequency, and I'm looking for V. Right, the frequency here is 261 hertz. Hertz is our base unit for frequency. I just don't know the wavelength. But that can be easily found using uh, this equation right here. So I'm going to have the lowest frequency, meaning the fundamental, the lowest we can go, uh, the fundamental frequency 1 for my n, lambda divided by 2, equals L, which is 66 centimeters, 0.66. So my wavelength here comes out to be 1.32 meters, right? So 1.32 meters, which then can get substituted over into my velocity equation. And velocity equals 1.32. I apologize for not changing back uh, uh, into red times my frequency, 261 uh, hertz, which gives me a velocity of sound in air of about 344.5, and we'll round for sig figs here. 344.5 hertz, two sig figs from my uh, 66 uh, there, so uh, centimeters, so 340, um, excuse me, not hertz there, meters per second, 340 meters per second, which is the velocity of sound, so that, uh, that all works uh, perfectly. One last thought for you about how most instruments work. Uh, almost all woodwinds uh, pretty much operate on the first, sometimes the second or third, sometimes the fourth and fifth, but hardly into the fourth and fifth. Generally, the first and second if it's a open at uh, both ends, or the first and third if it's open on one end and closed on the other harmonic. It, it hardly ever jumps all the way up. Brass instruments will jump up uh, to much higher harmonics um, without changing the length of the pipe. But, but the way most instruments work is you change the length of the pipe, which then will change the wavelength, thus, thus the frequency that you uh, end up hearing over here. So if a flute uh, is currently sharp and, and it needs to lower the pitch at that point in time, th there's a couple of methods for doing that, but one of them is to simply loosen the joint here and to lengthen the pipe. Whenever you lengthen the pipe, you uh, are going to cause the wavelength to grow. When the wavelength grows, the frequency goes down. Um, notes are changed in a clarinet or a flute by changing the length of the pipe by opening holes. And whenever you open the, whenever you open holes, you are shrinking the length of the pipe at that point in time, thus shrinking the wavelength. Wavelength goes down and frequency gets to go up. And pr pretty much all instruments operate under that principle. We change the length of the pipe. Thus, the wavelength is getting changed. The standing wave that's allowed to form gets changed, and so the frequency goes up or down as we please. 
One last problem here for you. I've got a tuning fork, and I'm holding this tuning fork uh, that produces a constant frequency of 450 hertz. I'm holding it over a uh, tube, open on one side, and water down the bottom. Now, the water is used really to change the air column length, uh, because what's going to happen here is your, uh, your uh, standing wave is going to be emitted from the tuning fork, is going to reflect off the water and come back out. This is a open, uh, open, closed, and open on one side, closed on the other uh, pipe. Okay, so this is an open, closed pipe here. And you can change the length L of the air column quite easily in this problem by simply uh, draining out some water, adding something in. But in, in this configuration, um, what, what we're going to be looking for here, because it's open on one side, closed on the other, in lambda over 4 equals L. And specifically in this problem, we're going to change the length of the pipe, a.k.a. drain out some water, while we keep the frequency uh, that's being emitted exactly the same down the pipe. And we're, I'm looking for what lengths of pipe L uh, will produce the first harmonic, um, the fundamental harmonic, with our 450 uh, hurt tuning fork, aka there'll be a standing wave set up here. What will produce the third harmonic? Remember, only odd harmonics for open close. And what will produce what length uh, of pipe, aka having to drain out more water or add more water in? We shall see, um, of course. Um, what, what length of pipe will create the fifth harmonic? Uh, so to start out with, um, I'm trying to solve for L over here, but I don't have wavelength, so I need to solve for what wavelength of sound this 450 hertz uh, gives off. So V equals lambda F. We'll use 340 as the velocity of sound. Lambda times 450 hertz is the uh, sound wave that is being emitted uh, down through the pipe. So dividing both sides by 450 hertz, I end up with a wavelength of 0.756 meters. All right, so that, that can get substituted in. And let's start out solving uh, for a lambda, one, a lambda of the fundamental, or length of the fundamental here. So we'll call that LN1 uh, is going to equal 1 times my wavelength of 0.756 divided by 4 meaning that my air column L over here, notice we're referring to the air column, not the water column. The sound uh, is, is uh, coming back off, reflecting off the water, creating a pipe. The water is just used to vary the length of the pipe L. Um, but we need a length of a pipe L over here of 0.19 meters approximately with sig figs there. So now I'm going to go ahead and work the math for you for the others because it's exactly the same. The wavelength of the sound is not changing. I have a tuning fork that is emitting a constant frequency and since the velocity of sound is not changing in air, uh, a constant wavelength uh, is being emitted and I'm trying to create standing waves here by changing the length of the water. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for the third harmonic. Fifth harmonic, note they're odd because of the open and closed pipe. All right, so now we've solved for uh, all of the lengths of pipes necessary, uh, keeping the frequency, thus the wavelength uh, being emitted, aka the pitch is going to remain the same. Instead, we're varying the length of the pipe L by draining out water to, to allow room to where the first, then the third, then the fifth harmonic could be set up. So to actually get the fifth harmonic set up, you're going to need a much longer tube uh, to, to allow that to set up, keeping the, the frequency uh, and thus the wavelength the same. 